light up the river with all these beautiful lights in the river. And we're going to take it to the Christian holy site. Because these are all owned by an Israeli kibbutz. And uh, they're just smart business people. They know how to run. And they can't charge you to to get baptized, but they can charge you for a robe. Yeah. They find ways. <laughs> they find yeah. ways. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but it's the best, it's the most beautiful place to get baptized. Mm -hmm. Is it the most authentic? You know, it doesn't matter. It's the Jordan River. Right? Uh, we, don't, we don't know exactly what's happening. Either way, for me, it's the most beautiful, it's the cleanest mm -hmm. part to get baptized. Mm -hmm. And it's closest to my house. Um, <laughs> my children's school is right here. This is their kibbutz right here. Um, this, this little horse ranch over here is part of their kibbutz. And you get on the other side of the other set of trees is, is where their school little building starts. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where, where Shuki, Max, and Levy go to school. Mm -hmm. And Emma used to go to school, now she's in school. So for us, it's, it's like, it's the stomping grounds. It's so it cool. I love it. It is your river. And just come in and say hi to some of the people that work here uh, all the time. And Chaim actually is, couldn't make it this morning, but he is. Good. Yeah. There are some big catfish in here, by the way. They're not kosher, but they're like. But they're, they're a little deeper, so don't worry. If you see any fish, they're going to be tiny ones that might be a little nibble on your feet a little bit. No, tiny, so don't worry. But Chaim, Chaim, they, they call Chaim, Chaim the baptizer here. Chaim Hamathbir. They actually call him that here in the Galilee. And he's the go to guy if they have a tour group, they want a bapt guy to baptize them. They call Chaim because they, they know he's the Messianic Jew that will baptize Christians when they come. So picture Chaim here. Um, I wish he could have come this morning to, to, uh, to be a part of the baptism. Um, but I've had some, so many special times here, and you can see all these different languages. Um, Mark, we're going to read from Mark chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And you read in uh, Pigeon, I can't see it from here, but uh, Hawaiian Pigeon, which is quite a funny language. Uh, I think German is probably the funnier. Uh, is it Chinese as well? I'm sure it is. Maybe outside. There's one outside there as well. There is Chinese. Oh, really? yeah. 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 I missed that. And if, it's a, if it's a major language, it's, it's up there. Yeah. But it's just think about it, this little act that happened, which is not not little at all, it's it's been replicated around the been replicated around the world. It's called the Greek fit. It's a Hebrew thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, my mom when she heard the gospel for the first time, this Martin Chernoff, it was kind of more of a Jewish perspective and and uh, but before that it was always Christianized, which is fine. Uh, because it's about the gospel, it's about the good news. But really, if you want to get to the root of it all, it was a mikveh. Everybody say mikveh. Mikveh. And then plural is mikvot. So a mikveh is a, is a ritual cleansing. If you go to some of these ancient synagogues, there was the steps to go down and get ritually cleansed before you enter to the holy place, the synagogue, or a place where you can discuss holy things. If you go to Jerusalem, all outside Jerusalem, at the uh, the southern steps, there's mikvot everywhere. When... when, when uh, when Peter got up to share the gospel and thousands were saved, he said immediately they were baptized. They didn't come to the Jordan River, they had a mikveh. They went to it, they, they got ritually immersed, which was a Jewish thing. Passover, right? You, we have Holy Communion in the church. It's basically a replication of Passover. With, uh, it's become this weekly thing. The Passover really represent, represents once a year we were supposed, we had to, for all of our generations, to break bread, remember the, remember, remember the lamb, remember the, the lamb that was... Uh, that was, that was uh, sacrificed in the blood. So all of these things, these Jewish things that we do today in the church, we might forget. But the baptism that you do in church, this is it. We're going to read it right now. Because it, it talks about John's baptism, Yeshua's baptism. There were baptisms that represented something. So I'm going to read here, uh, Mark, I'm going to go back to verse 4, Mark chapter 1. And so John... The Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. This is his baptism. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went to out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist uh, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to read verse 9 with him, verse 9 to 11. At that time, Yeshua came from Nazareth in Galilee, was baptized by, George, George, by John in the Jordan. Just as Yeshua was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. 
and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. It's a preparation for something. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and angels attended him. And uh, <clears throat> just two more verses. After John was put to prison, Yeshua went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, end quote. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So remember, Yeshua was baptized and he immediately got out and went into the desert. As soon as we get out of this water, we're going to immediately get out in the bus and go to the desert, go to the wilderness. Oh. And, and, uh, so you can imagine this, but but he was being prepared. He, he, it was it was the uh, preparation for his, his ministry. He, it, it wasn't time yet. This is the time, right? Was he baptized? It was time, and he went to be tempted first. So if you're called to ministry, be prepared for that temptation. Um, temptation isn't a sin. It's how you respond to temptation, right? Yeah. So if you're getting baptized today, you how many have already been baptized before? Can I say everybody? Yeah. No. So no. No. Okay. First time. Awesome. Praise God. So this is this is a special time. Hey Daniel. Hey Daniel. This is really special for all of us, uh, especially for Daniel, the DH over here, uh, Daniel Hunter. Um, and I just want to pray as we go in. You know, I'm just maybe just sing one song and just go and just 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 have this, this holy moment. If, if if you've been baptized before, most of you have. This is the time to say, okay. That thing that I've been holding on my shoulder that I should not be holding. I want you to be praying as you're standing here. What What am I doing? What am I carrying that I'm not supposed to be carrying with God? What can I wake up to when I come out of the water, renewed and refreshed, uh, before I head into the desert, in the wilderness, back home? Because it's not supposed to be perfect. Uh, it, we're, you're, you're walking hand in hand with, with the perfect one. But you're going to be walking to temptation. You're going to be walking to things, especially us in the first world. We're distracted by so many blessings. Just like the Israelites, we were distracted by the blessings. We forgot who blessed us, and then we thought it was us. And then before we know it, we're so overwhelmed by all these great things, and we forget, and all of a sudden we're walking in the opposite of blessing us, to say, to put, to put it nicely. So this is a time to just reflect and say, God, what can I do to serve you most perfectly and to come out of this water? You with all of my heart. So, Father, I just pray that we, uh, you just bless this time together in Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. We just thank you, Lord. That your mercies are new every morning. Listen that chorus. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning, great is your faithfulness, oh Lord, great is your faithfulness.
Hallelujah. See, the second lady goes to the water. Today, the pioneers in the water are ladies. I see. I see the first man without you. I'm going to head this way. We can just form a line. I'm going to go down.